Greenville, South Carolina, working on this Kes Hogue case. And we just left the hospital from where she was last seen, so we're taking that route back. Um, allegedly, um, we do have the Freedom of Information Act report, or the police reports that are associated with this case. And we were kind of going off of that, and I'll let John explain kind of what he saw or what, what all it discloses here in just a minute. But So again, where we start at is last known point, right? So the last known place around the hospital that they saw her on camera was from the emergency room. So from the emergency room, then we get on to, what's the name of this road? Uh, West Ferris. So we're on West Ferris heading to the intersection of Augusta. Correct. Correct. So from West Ferris to Augusta on West Ferris, I believe it is, there's a doctor's office that just has a bench in front of it, and that is the last known video that they're seeing whatsoever uh, before she just vanishes, basically. I'm not sure which direction. They believe the direction in the video because, again, I haven't seen this. I'm just going off of what the family's telling me or one of her family members is telling me. She gets up off the bench and she starts walking back towards the hospital area. Now, what I'm going to do is just kind of turn this around. And you can see all these houses that we're passing right now, or a majority of all the houses that we're passing, they've all got ring doorbell cameras, right? Now, the only issue with that, or the only issue that I see, is it being over two years now, well, like almost technically going on three, um, trying to get that footage back. But we've passed at least, I'd say 25, 30 cameras right here. I mean, basically every house with the exception of maybe two or three doesn't have a camera. So if anybody lives on Augusta Street or East Ferris near Greenville Memorial Hospital, if you can go back and check that and you can put her on video, it was on July 5th, sometime between 10 30 at night and midnight so july 5th late late night hours into early morning hours of july 6th if you can see her that'd be great because a hundred percent no doubt in my mind if around that same time frame if those cameras had been here again i don't know that they were it was two years ago but if they were here they would come back and be able to pull something up off that if it's not deleted which i'm hoping and praying that's not because at this intersection too you've got a cvs pizza place a walgreens i mean there's all kinds of businesses right around in here and that's just kind of where we're at right now was there anything that you saw in the and i am here with palmetto sleuth is there anything that you saw out of the reports that you was reading that sparked your interest on anything the, the biggest interest i have is anything about running dogs that's mentioned is in an area 12 miles from here there's no mention of the several wooded areas that we've passed today that look definitely be places of interest so that we're not sure if they actually ran dogs it's not in the reports all right yeah and as as far as the dogs and again today it wouldn't benefit us very much really at all if we try to run it because it's raining of course it seems like every time we try to do one of these here recently that's all it does is rain uh, but we're really just going back and taking the last known path and that's what works for us so we're trying to piece that back together but we just are passing so many i mean even here you can see like we're walking right past greenville city fire department and there's clearly a camera there so that's that's what we're looking for number one we're trying to make sure that we're in the right area right uh number two if the video cameras that picked her up were from the hospital there's just a lot of other cameras there and again we, i keep harping on those not because it's going to make a difference at this point but if somebody watching this or somebody knows somebody that lives around that area that may possibly have that it really could help us out a good bit but plus the van what color did they say it was a blue, blue a blue older model van was the last vehicle or was seen at the hospital in the parking garage right correct at the parking garage she gets in stays for a minute or so i don't know may not even been that long and then gets back out uh, if we could get law enforcement that tag information or the owner of that I, I think that would help too just kind of know what the state of mind was or what that conversation that was held there um, and then it's just hard for me to fathom that if she's not off in the woods somewhere in this area which i hope she's not that somebody didn't see her even with covid going on because i mean it's been super busy all day so we're going to kind of keep following up and see what we can come up. all right so the one area that really truly interests us a lot or interests me a good bit was if she came back towards the hospital you've got this big and again i don't know what it looked like two years ago but i'm sure there, there was something here but you've got this area right 
and it kind of runs up underneath this bridge around in that you know again i don't necessarily like i said i hope nothing is wrong but i feel as though this would be a good place to look if it's already been looked i don't know i'm sure it has uh just kind of one of those things we want to be careful about looking just because certain areas of being so close to the hospital some other things like that really want to talk with somebody that really the people that are in charge to give us that full permission to be out here right uh again i haven't seen anything that says no trespassing so what we're going to try to do is john's going to try and fly that drone just to see right just to see because the biggest things that we're looking for she's got apparently a very large red crocodile type purse with her and then she also has on a tie-dye shirt uh, i'm not sure the kind of pants she had on i, I really don't, i don't know that i have to go back through and look but that's definitely something we're going to send it down through there just to look and at that point we're kind of going to see what all area has been covered right biggest thing is those cameras man that really truly sucks because i'm telling you like if you come down here and you see it every move she would have made basically in any direction was captured on camera or hypothetically would have been if those same cameras had been in place two almost three years ago i i was told that she, it was at night so i was kind of misunderstanding there that it was during the day 10 30 to midnight you know during the afternoon time but no it was 10 30 to midnight in the evening so that on top of the fact it was during covid everybody was more than likely at home all those houses all those cameras i mean that would have been key it would have been super key now from what i've gathered and what i'm looking at i don't think unfortunately if she is passed or deceased because she was in that a really bad headspace right she had been having some troubles things like that i'm not trying to put all our personal business out there that's just what we do that's what we go off of and again i'm always drawn back to the water and that's just kind of what we specialize in right again sure it's been calmed through but it doesn't ever hurt to check anything over again right so that's that's where we specialize to find that thing that everybody else has missed so hopefully we can do we just that got done flying the drone around on this what did you say the name of this river was and this is the brushy creek river again not necessarily saying that there was anything that drawed our interest to it other than the fact you know that's kind of what we specialize in it's water searches well land as well but we were looking more for something to be in the water there didn't find anything uh he said that the water showed super clear on the drum and but it did look like there had been people down there obviously you know some of some of this stuff's been undercut the brush has been cut you know it's been kept up but again doesn't mean that something could have been missed over a bag that red purse uh the tie-dyed shirt things like that that's what we're looking for but he went that the entirety of everything up through that way uh with the drone didn't go anywhere underneath the bridge on that other side really just gonna have to go back through and man i mean i hate to harp on it but this is the importance of the camera footage but when it comes to cases like this camera footage and cell phones if you've got the camera footage and you've got cell phones i mean that's a, like a 90 eight percent chance that we'll be able to come and recover or locate somebody from that but with this i mean it's just it's huge it's super busy out here um you know it is what it is they, they're not all gonna be perfect and that's what we do when we tell people to try to help them we'll help them but the biggest thing that i can ask for is like i said go back through check those camera systems maybe you do maybe you don't something that'll help narrow us down into an area right and we'll go back through and we'll scour the police report that because we do have a copy of that and we'll scour that and see if there's anything or what areas she was actually last saw in right i mean i hate it for the family on this one it's going on two if not three years and uh i hate it for all the families in these cases that we deal with but there may be somebody out there that's watching this right now that knows something or heard of something if you will reach out and be glad to talk to you or get you in touch with somebody if you don't want to talk to us um only thing i'm concerned with is getting getting this loved one located and brought back home to her family. Other than that, God bless. Y'all take care.